Hey there, Wolfpack fans. It's me again, Kenton Gibbs, bringing you another episode of Locked On Wolfpack. And folks, we're looking at a game where it, things look dark. Things look bleak. Things look grim. But somebody must have whispered the famous Andy Reid quote in Jakia Brown Turner's ear that when things look grim, you need to be the Grim Reaper. Because boy, I'll tell you what, she came out of a shell to end this game, to get it in overtime, and to win this game. We're going to talk about this game, how it happened, as well as a weekend review of all things NC State, the good, the bad, the ugly, and everything in between for women's basketball. That sounds like a good episode to you, Grace. Especially when we beat that light blue team. Sounds like a great episode. Absolutely. Well, let's get into it. But before I do, let me make sure to make you all know that this episode is brought to you all by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Place your first $5 bet to get $150 in free bets. Win or lose. Visit FanDuel.com to get started today. So we're going to review the full week for this NC State women's basketball team. It's almost the exact opposite of the men's review. It started off a little shaky, but then got better at the end. But we're going to talk all things Wolfpack women's basketball and more on today's episode of Locked on Wolfpack. You are Locked on Wolfpack. Your daily podcast on the NC State Wolfpack. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day. So, Grayson, we're looking at a situation where we, we, of course, just like we did for men's basketball, we're going to start forward and or start the most recent game and work our way back. In this last, in, in this game last night, we saw our women's team have an epic comeback against the girls in baby blue. What are your first thoughts and takeaways from it? Thought number one, I love beating Carolina. And to be quite frank with you, for the majority of that game, I don't think we really deserve to win that game. So it really feels like Carolina kind of gift wrapped that one. And uh, hey, thank you. Christmas in February, we'll take it. We will take it. We'll we'll take gifts all year round from that from that blue school down the street. Um, good lord, what a game! What a comeback! Uh, it very much felt like we were going to be dead there in the third quarter. They started to pull away with it, and it kind of just felt like we had nothing for them uh, moving forward offensively. But found a way. We just found a way. You know, this was a this was a Jimmy Valvano win if I've ever seen one. Just don't give up. We didn't give up. We found a way. We made it happen in overtime. What a win. You know, when I look at this game, I think to myself and I, I look at defensive intensity as like the main thing that I say, this is what got us over the hump. This is what got us to win because this was a game in which, I mean, the defensive intensity was there all night long. Even when our shots were not falling, the defensive intensity was there. Even when we could not muster anything on offense, the offense was as stagnant as stagnant could be. The defensive intensity was there. And so it seemed like, now don't get me wrong, was the game perfect? No. Did we need a an explosion late to get back in it and, and make things happen? Absolutely. But with that being said, I mean, this is one of those games that you look at and you say, there was every reason for this team to pack it up, pack it in and say, all right, this is just not our night. And yet these women showed up and showed out when it mattered most. And, and that to me, I'm, I'm looking at this game and I'm looking at myself to that eight point fourth quarter or third quarter rather, where we come away in a, in a deep, deep hole. The fourth quarter in overtime, we outscored UNC 40 to 22. 40 to 22 in the fourth quarter in overtime. Like you said, it's a Jim Valvano game. If you've ever seen one, this team just did not quit even when they had the opportunity to. They, uh, they, they mentioned it. 
they mentioned it on the broadcast, but once the, the point where we went, there were a couple points, but I think the first time or the second time that we went down by 10 points there in the third quarter going into the fourth, from that point on, we went on a 22 to seven run. I, I, I'll be the first to raise my hand. I did not see that coming, especially really? with the way we've been playing here the last couple of weeks. That came out of completely nowhere. Uh, you know, better late than never for all of a sudden our shooting to kind of heat up, uh, most of which is from Jakia Brown-Turner. But, I mean, unbelievable. I, I, I sincerely thought we were dead there. It looked like we were dead. We had nothing going offensively. Diamond Johnson was virtually a no-show tonight. I think she finished 1 for 10, 0 for 6 from 3. And I think maybe yep. maybe two points. Yeah, that's I, I exactly. Double check. That's yeah, exactly. Okay, so there you go. Line. And that's when exactly. I mean, it really feels like she's just in a in a slump. And yeah. not just this game, but the UVA game, which we'll touch on in just a minute. She just doesn't look like Diamond Johnson. I don't know if it's a confidence thing or maybe it is just a slump that she'll work herself back out of. But she just can't get the shots to fall. And yeah. we. Because of that, when you when Diamond's giving you nothing, you saw a team look around like, well, what's what's going to happen now? And out came Isaiah James. 18 points from her tonight. She, I mean, I would consider this, in respect to Jakia Brown Turner, I would consider this to be an Isaiah James game. She came out of, the, out of the woodworks here, put in 18 points. She showed, I mean, we've seen it a couple times this year. I've mentioned it on here a couple times. She has a lot of scoring ability that we've seen in spurts, but the whole game tonight, she was making it happen. The playmaking ability from her, something to be very excited about moving forward. Um, but, yeah, she put it on display tonight. She put the team on her back. Her and Jakia did both. Uh, unbelievable comeback. I, I mean, lost for lost for words what a comeback that was. You know, you say that this is an Isaiah James game, and, and let's also talk about – the end of regulation, right? You get the bucket that ties the game up. Because there were multiple points where it seemed like, all right, we're coming back. We're coming back. And then girls in baby blue hit a shot. And it, it kept us at bay. But then at that final push, it seemed like we were on the precipice that we were right there. We just kept missing shots, missing shots. Isaiah James ties it up. They get the ball back, of course. They do their thing, get it up court. Isaiah James with the steal. Goes up court, misses the layup. Man. Now, some people say she was fouled on the shot. I think that that's a, I think that's a ticky tack call where the, the refs swallowing their whistle. I'm not mad at it. Even if we lose that game, I'm not mad at the refs for not calling that call. I, I'm really not. It, it, yes, there was a, a tad bit of contact. I'm not mad at them not calling. I'm sorry. I'm just not. And so, at that moment, she can hang her head and say, oh, it's over. I, I blew it. I'm not, I, I'm just not the player for this moment. But instead, what happens? First thing first, Sanaya Rivers is the first player over there. To, hey, keep your head up. We're going to be all right. We'll be fine. This is, you know, we're good here. And then when you look at the overtime and what she did there, that shows you, that shows you what it was. The first basket of overtime, was Isaiah James. And one I believe the last basket as well that we scored was Isaiah James. Or no, no, it was two uh made free throws from Isaiah. Those were uh the two last points that we had as well as a steal on an inbound where she missed the layup. But still the the reality is actually and our last made basket from the field was Isaiah James. So in looking at this game, it wasn't Isaiah James game. Because, yes, statistically, she did a lot, poured a lot in in terms of scoring and all that. But if you watch the game and see how she handled herself after some adversity, after a moment where it's right there for her to hang her head and say, all right, well, I just don't got it. Oh, man, I blew it. I blew it. We almost came back. We almost had us another win against the ranked team. I just blew it. She instead continues to, to show up downhill no frills and she was tied to, for the leading score in this um in this game with 18 points as well as Jakia Brown Turner chipping in 18 herself uh before she fouled out and I'm going to tell you something Jakia Brown Turner before she fouled out 
She was another one who made the game right there. She did everything she could uh, to keep us in this game. And so, you know, this, this was, this was just a moment where you look at that, that fourth quarter and you say to yourself, full, complete team effort. Everybody showed up and all that. If we could play like that for four quarters, that'd be great. But you know what? If you match that fourth quarter with three other quarters of really good defensive intensity, even if the offense ain't going, you've got some on your hands there. And by the way, Diamond Johnson, you already talked about, was a little cold in this game and was cold last game. But for the folks out there in TV land, let's talk about in depth how these last two games have gone, okay? Between UVA and this game, she is shooting, I believe, a combined three for 22, I believe. Uh, it's It's been tough. It's been very tough um, for her in these last two games. Three of 22, and I want to say 0 of 14 from deep. So it's it's been rough. It's been rough to say the least. It's It's been a struggle for her um, in these past few games. And, you know, at some point in time, you figure this slump will be over. You figure this rut will be over. But, man, it's – for a player who was a 50, 40, 90 player to now kind of go into this mode and this zone in terms of struggling, that's tough to overcome. Yeah, I think, I think for Diamond, it really – a slump is kind of just all it is. You know, we've seen what she can do you know, night and night and night out. I don't anticipate this being, you know, a rest of the season type deal. Um, is this coming at a tough spot in the season? Yeah, absolutely. You know, this is this is the point where, you know, we've been struggling. We need a leader to step up and kind of show us the way because, quite frankly, we haven't been getting that much from our seniors this year, uh, but we have been getting it from Diamond. So, for that to go away tonight in, you know, one of the biggest home games against our rival, kind of tough to see it go like that. But, you know, out of nowhere comes our, our role players in Isaiah James um, and one of our senior leaders in Jakia Brown-Turner stepping up, and we did get it done. But for Diamond, I really just think it is what it is. You know, it's just a slump. It's just a tough stretch. You know, I, I have faith in her that she'll figure it out. Um, I think – I think there are much bigger issues for the team than just Diamond Johnson, um, but we were able to overcome them tonight. That's really that's really all it comes down to. Absolutely, and again, huge win to um, to beat this team. But we're going to get into some of those issues in just a second here, because again, it's great to get this win. Great to talk about those things. So we need to give you a full recap of all um, women basket, women's basketball at the moment. But before we do, I've got to talk to you about FanDuel. The midway point of the NBA season is here, and now is the perfect time to download FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line to point scores and threes drained, it doesn't matter. Again, you can discuss any bets for this week or you can make any bets for this week happen on FanDuel. And they even let you combine bets for a bigger chance at for a chance at a bigger payout uh, with the same game parlay. So don't miss out on your chance to get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to fanduel.com slash locked on. That's fanduel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. So, Grayson, of course, in talking about um, this this team and, and how they've been performing and all that, there is, there was, and, and before we get into the struggles here, let me just say this. Wolfpack Nation, there is not a better fan base out there. There is not a better fan base out there. And let me tell you why. The announcers were talking about how when NC State took that 10-point deficit the second time, with, I want to say it was like, what was it, five minutes left or so? Or how how, how much was left there? I think there was about four or five minutes left. Yeah, Four or five minutes left. The announcers noted, even after the, the second 10-point deficit, 
Nobody left Reynolds. It was still packed with folks who believed in this team. And boy, I'll tell you what, we ran Courtney Banghart out of our small little gym. Listen, that's a lot of talk from somebody that's never won in Reynolds, by the way. It's a, it's a, it's a small little gym with the small little farmers and small little hicks. I mean, I'm from the west side of Detroit, but I guess I'm a small little hick too since I graduated from NC State. And, and, and we found a way to once again win. And, and again, Wolfpack Nation, it cannot be stated how important it is to have that atmosphere. It cannot be state, it cannot be overstated how important that is to this team. But now we of course have got to talk about the other games this week. Because of course, we would love for this to be the only game that there is and the only game worth talking about. However, after our very, very ugly win against uh against Wake Forest, where we said, hey, you know. One of those days where it's an ugly win, but you'll take it. We go play a UVA team that we beat by 25 earlier this season, a UVA team that was on a seven-game losing streak, and we find a way to lose that game and get knocked out of the top 25 in the process. What did you think watching that game? That game was... Everything we said couldn't happen in one game. Just kind of a microcosm of the entire season. Just lack of focus, lack of effort. The body language was bad. You know, not to not to jump back and forth, the body language was kind of bad in the first half of the UNC game as well, so that kind of carried over. But the whole UVA game, body language was horrible. You know, another tough game for Diamond Johnson. She was one of 12. Just just not seeing it. Just the, can't can't get the ball to go through it. You know, it happens to everybody at some point, but just a tough stretch for her. You know, Sanaya had a tough game. I think she was like one for eight, one for nine. That was brutal. The only person that was really able to do much of anything was Jada Boy. Now, mm-hmm. as critical as we have been of her this year, if now is when she's going to turn it on, I welcome it with open arms. Because, I'll take it. I'll yeah, take it. I mean, she was the only one, really. Her, I guess Jakia a little bit, but more so Jada than anyone else. Jada looked like a senior. She looked yeah. like what we basically supposed to have been getting all season. That was yeah. great to see. However, didn't get anything from anybody else. And that was kind of all she wrote from there on out. You know, like we said – no matter how bad a team is struggling, no matter how many games they've lost in a row, if you mess around too long in the ACC game, the other team's going to figure out how to beat you. And that is exactly what we saw in Charlottesville. And and the thing that I want to talk about the most here is I've, I've talked about this ad nauseum, and even in this UNC game, it, it, it happened again. It's about how this team starts more than anything else. And yes, we'll have games like the UNC game where we, we, you know, we struggle in the beginning, but we find a way and we figure it out late. But especially against an inferior opponent, if you let them hang around, if you let them say, hey, wait a minute, they are so tough. We can play with them. Guess what's going to happen? You'll find a way to end up in a dogfight, and you might even find a way to lose that ball game. You might even find a way to lose that ball game. And so, you know, part of me felt like they were looking ahead to UNC. Another part of me was like, I, I, I really, I don't think that this team is good enough to be looking ahead. But it, it's it, it felt like one of those moments. Um, and you know, both of our teams, men's and women's. Took L's before the UNC game here. Hopefully, you know, we, we get a little repeat performance of, of what we saw um, tonight here. But very seriously, this this game, it brought all of NC State's problems to the forefront at once, except for the whole, like, senior lack of senior leadership thing. Like, it, it brought the stagnant, very little ball movement, uh, passive 
settling for way too many jumpers. I mean, I'm going to tell you this. When I say that, hey, Sanaya Rivers is legitimately a year away from superstar conversations, I don't mean that because I'm like, oh, she's an excellent shooter, and that's the first thing you think about in her game. No! When I look at Sanaya Rivers, I look at somebody who is extremely long, defends extremely well, and when she gets to the bucket, she has the size that how many wings can really bother her at the rim? How many? And yet you are jacking up six threes for what exactly? And I know some people will say, well, Ken, some of those threes were open and you got to knock it down. Sure. But here's the thing. Normally in an ACC basketball game, if you're left open a lot, it's intentional. There's, you know, those people on that sideline get paid a lot of money. Just like Westmore gets paid a lot of money. They get paid a lot of money over there too. And when they get paid all that money, they say, well, You cannot stop everything, you know, trying to stop a team from having any shots or any open anything is like trying to stop rain from falling. It will not happen. You just can't make that happen. So what you do is you say, let's play the numbers here. This person driving, we don't want that. They're good at finishing at the rim. This person back to the basket, we don't want that. They've got good footwork. That person shooting an uncontested three. They're not too good at it. We'll take our chances. And that is what happened. They took their chances and said, eh, we'll, we'll be okay. If Sanai can beat us from deep, she'll beat us. And she didn't. But, I mean, realistically, again, if you look at what she has done in terms of shooting the basketball this year, her field goal percentage has nearly doubled from what it was last year, up from 24.5 to 47.1. Her three-point percentage has nearly, uh, I want to say, what is what is what would you say for 10? It's nearly 10 times higher than what it was, but, or no, it's eight times higher, about eight times higher, but it was 3.2% last year. This year, she's only shooting 23.5% from deep. That is not your shot. That's not why you're going to be a superstar. You can add that shot, sure. I'm sure she's a hard worker. I'm sure that that shot is going to come along. I hope and pray that she becomes a, a striper from deep that's shooting 40% one day, because at that point, uh, she's a demigod. She's a Jordan build. She's a, a, a whatever you look at. She's LeBron James uh, just on a, uh, at, that just happens to play for NC State if she starts shooting 40% for me. But that's not what I expect of you. What I expect of you is to get to the rim authoritatively, finish at the rim like you can, because again, you are too big for the rest of the wings in this conference, for the rest of the wings in the nation, really. Not too many have the length to bother you. You have the handle to do so as well. That's where you need to be going. Not passively settling for, well, they left me open. I got to shoot. No, you don't. You don't have to shoot, actually. So, you know, that's just my piece there. Yeah, I I do think a lot of our offensive struggles are not taking advantage of the athleticism that we have. You know, I think more so than probably a lot of teams in the ACC, we are very athletic. I just don't think we use that to our maximum potential. I think when we are at our absolute worst on offense, it's a lot of dribbling. The movement we do create, it's not really movement with intention. It looks like it's just kind of going through the motions like, oh, well, yeah, I'll I'll cut through. If I get the ball, I get it. If not, oh, well. And then the ball handler, most of the time it's still diamond. It's just kind of dribbling until there's about four or five seconds on the shot clock. It's like, okay, well, here it goes. And then if it goes in, great. And if it doesn't, well, back on defense. That's not going to cut it. It's mm-hmm. it hasn't been cutting it, and it won't won't be cutting it moving forward. We, you know, obviously it didn't work against UVA, and that's quite embarrassing with the struggles that they've been going through. Uh, yep. We were lucky enough to have it work against UNC, but you know, coming up, we got to go to Duke and we got to go to Virginia Tech. I guarantee you, it ain't going to fly against those two teams. So. Are we going to solve all these problems before we play those teams? Probably not. But if you can just create enough magic that you found against UNC and just fight, you just got to fight. This is the point of the season where so many things have gone wrong. A couple things have gone right. You just got to formulate it all together and just get out there and compete. This team just needs to compete. Be as athletic as you are and compete. 
Yeah. And, you know, let the chips fall where they may with this team. You know, I can tell just based on the body language, even from Wes Moore, how frustrating this season has been. From here on out, you just have to do your best and compete and compete, compete, compete. I agree. I agree. And for me, this is about this team coming in locked in. Um, and I'll, I'll add in one more thing. Uh, this offense is starting to look like the Kevin Keats offense a little bit. And At times it is. It really is. It's just standing around and, oh, let's get a screen. And let's see if we get something run off this screen. That ain't Westmore and crew. Again, I, I can name you. I can tell you what the sets look like from memory. that I haven't played. Not a single – not a single. I've never been uh, one of the guys that do the scout for um, women's basketball. I've never been any of those things. But I can tell you right now, point guard at uh, one of the at the top of not at the top, but at right or left hand side, like well outside the three point line. We got both of our forwards or one of our our center and one of our players who is very good at scoring, setting a double screen. Our guard going, running by, getting through that double screen, seeing, all right, do we want to take this thing to the rim? Do we want to pull up for a three if they go under? What do we do from there? One of the players who set the screen rolls to the basket and then post up under the rim. The other player pops out. And there are many variations of that to where many different things happen off of that action. I need to see that again. I need to see because it's so effective. It is so effective. And I know we don't have an Alyssa Kunane anymore. I understand that. I get it. I know she ain't walking through that door. I, I understand that. Cool. But I need to see something. And they were talking about how great Westmore is at drawing up plays out of the uh out of the timeouts and getting, you know, the players to execute what is out of timeouts. Well, to me, it seems like it's incumbent upon these players then to execute the plays that are being called because there's there has to be more. There has to be more than than what we're seeing offensively, and I believe that there is. And again, to me, you know, when we got knocked out of the top 25, a lot of people were very upset and very worried about that. And I'm like, listen, it is upsetting. It is something that you can worry about, but please be aware of what's ahead of us. We've already beat Notre Dame, which I believe is the best team that we we have seen and will see this season. You've got Virginia Tech. You've got Duke. You've got you and you just got to win against USC. If there is ever time to quote unquote improve your seating heading into the tournament, if there was ever a time to, you know, everything outside of just outright winning the tournament as well, of course, which again in the 2020s, we have not lost a single game in the ACC tournament. It's now. Now's the time to turn it on. So we'll see how this thing goes, but I think that this team is on to something special. We're about to land this thing. After a quick word from our sponsors. All righty, and we're back to land this thing. But again, the weekend review to me, exact opposite of the men's team. Disappointing loss to start this thing off. But boy, what a win last night. What a win. I'm excited. I'm geeked up about it. This is, this is the type of win that, again, you look at it and you say to yourself, every reason to quit, every reason to stop, and yet they showed up. So it was certainly a great start to what is a unbelievable weekend in Raleigh with women's basketball on Thursday. You got uh, wrestling goes to Chapel Hill on Friday. You have men's basketball plays on Sunday against Chapel Hill. And then you have ice hockey against UNC on Monday. And to start off that big weekend with a win against the UNC women's team, we checked the first box. I will take it. It was ugly, but I will take it. So we are 1-0 this week. And and you know what? With this team, I don't care if it's ugly. I don't care if it's pretty. I don't care if it's a, a Mercedes-Benz. I don't care if it's a 01 uh, Mazda 626. That's I, I had a the, the first model that they ever stopped calling it the 626 and start calling it the Mazda 6. Boy, was that car old. Rest in peace to uh, Diana. Anywho. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. The reality is, if this team can get a win against a ranked opponent, I don't care how we get it. I don't care how we. I don't care if it's a fourth quarter spurt. I don't care if it's an outright domination. Don't care how it happens. Just care that it happens. 
Wolfpack Nation, again, thank you all for being who you are. Thank you for staying from start to finish. Thank you for even when it looks dark, even when it looks ugly, even when it looks like we're up against the ropes and the knockout punch is about to be delivered. Wolfpack Nation doesn't leave. You stand there you, and you cheer. You make it loud. You make it just a difficult, terrible time in our terrible little gym. You do it every single time, and we should keep doing it every time and keep making sure that Courtney Banghart doesn't get a win there because Wolfpack Nation, you have a great hand in that. Peace and love, y'all, and as always, go Pack. Go Pack. You are locked on Wolfpack, your daily podcast on the NC State Wolfpack. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.